right now on the Squawk News line to talk about AMC after it reported second quarter results last night and other meme stocks and so much more is Jim Chanos. He is president and founder of uh, Kinecos Associates. And Jim, it's great to have you on the program. Uh, you have uh, uh, been watching this meme stock phenomenon uh, for quite some time now. I, I think somewhat baffled as I have been, but I'm curious uh, how you see the earnings report that we just saw from, from AMC last night and the support that AMC seems to be getting from its retail shareholder base. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me, uh, Andrew. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, well, of course, the retail base is, is crucial to uh, all the meme stocks, and particularly AMC. And, uh, and uh, the CEO, who I think uh, is, is coming on within the hour on one of your other shows, uh, uh, played that up last night uh, on the call, uh, as he probably should. Um, the problem, of course, is is that everybody is looking at this versus last year and versus the street's expectations more recently. Um, but, of course, is in any of these sort of reopening stocks, you really have to kind of compare them to 2019, pre-pandemic. And in that case, uh, AMC's revenues were down 70% in the uh, in the second quarter versus second quarter 2019, their ticket sales were down 75 percent. And to put that in perspective, if you look at it uh, versus another reopening play that we know something about, Planet Fitness, which is, you know, gyms have had their own issues, as have movie theaters. Uh, Planet Fitness reported yesterday and their revenues were down 25 percent versus the second quarter of 2019. And that's a little bit more representative of a lot of the reopening uh, type plays that we're seeing. So something else is happening in movie theaters. And I think, as, as probably others have pointed out to you, um, what has changed is, of course, the difference in streaming by the studios and the fact that some of the major studios now are releasing blockbuster movies to home view at the exact same time they're putting them in the theaters. And that's something that's changed. So, Jim, though, when you think about the fact that, that Adam Aaron says, look, we have $2 billion of liquidity. I think they have about $815 million, $813 million of cash on hand. And, and he says it's possible uh, that they could reach profitability by the end of this year. That assumes, though, uh, that the box office total reaches a little over $5 billion. Is that a realistic possibility? Yeah, well, let, let's put expectations into sort of perspective here. Um, at the beginning of this year, when AMC stock was trading at $2, um, the expectations for revenues for AMC were $3.5 billion this year. Today, those same Wall Street expectations for this year are $2.4 billion. Uh, it, on January 1st, the company was supposed to be EBITDA positive for the year to the tune of about $50 million. That estimate is now negative $500 million. Um, and then adjusted net income, which benefits, obviously, from the increased share count, I should note, uh, was supposed to be almost uh, uh, $800 million in the red on January 1st for the company. It's now supposed to be negative $1.5 billion in the red. So, I mean, the, the reality is, is things have gotten worse at this company from the depths of the pandemic on January 1st. Um, and, and so clearly, again, something has changed, I think, and that, that change is streaming. We'll see. The latest box office numbers have been running down anywhere from 50 to 70 percent uh, this summer from 2019's level. The U.S. box office was about $11 billion in 2019, and uh, AMC had about a 45 percent market share. They did about five billion in revenues. So you can kind of run through the numbers. If they are running down 50 to 60 percent, they're going to be doing somewhere around two and a half billion, um, possibly even less in revenues on a run rate basis. And there's just no way they can be profitable. Um, they have interest expense of almost 100 million a quarter and depreciation and amortization of 100 million. At their peak year 2019, they did 660 million right. EBITDA. If they got back to that, Melissa, they would be losing almost 200 million a year. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.